knowledge is given by God, but his knowledge he owns himself. He is all knowing. To make it in Arabic, just for your understanding, when we say Alim, that means the knowing. We can also we also know something that we can say Alim. But when we say this word for Allah, a very basic rule I tell you in Arabic grammar and you can keep it. We add before this alif and dam. And then in English you can say it's A L. And this alim is same. We are alim, we know. But when we say this word for Allah, then we say Al Alim. You have seen all the names that I have just displayed here, all these names. Allah Al-Quddus. So that Alif Lam that is in the start of this, I mean attributed names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make it distinctive or significant that this is only for God, not for the human beings, not for the people. But we can be Abdul Ali, but not Al Ali. So that is why. Our Islamic scholars, they say when someone's name is Aleem, we don't just call him Aleem, we call it Abdul Aleem. Someone is Halim. Halim is Allah's attributed name that we call him Abdul Halim, not just only Aleem. for human beings with this word and then you plus like Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahman is the attributed name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when we add this word before the Ar-Rahman Abdul Rahman that means that we are the slave of the God that is his attributed name Ar-Rahman the, the merciful means that we are the slave of that who is merciful and if you put Al Rahim, I mean the, the most gracious, and we are the slave of the most gracious. I mean Abdul Rahim, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Alim. This word I told you. Alim means all, all knowing. If we say for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alim means the all knowing. And then we add B. When we say just book, this is my book. But when you refer to some holy books, then what you say? The book. That means that it implies that this book is something special and this is not for a common book, but that is used for the holy books. The all knowing. So with this formula, with this distinctive way that there those attributed names that we also have, but even in view with this difference that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forever and is eternal, but our knowledge is limited. It has shortcomings. Our knowledge is given by God, but Allah's knowledge is itself. We, we learn the knowledge from teachers. We need mentors to learn from. They are the gurus in media, like media gurus. And then we learn from them and then we, we pass on this knowledge to others. This is the limitation of our knowledge that we need to know from others. But Allah's knowledge is eternal, infinite. He knows what will happen and what has happened and what's happening. And then in Arabic, the one more word that is used that is called This word kul means all. The Allah, He is 
knowing everything. Wahwa bi kulli shayin alim, wahwa bi kulli shayin kadeer. And as I told you about the determination, our determination and God's determination when He determines something is different. In the Quran, that is one, I mean, verse that explains, Inna ma amruhu ida arada shayin ayyakul alahu kun fayakun. When Allah determines or wants to do something, He just say kun fayakun, and then He it happens. But when we determine. When we made up our minds, that's it. We say, okay, I want to get grade A in my final exam. Then you say no, and then does it happen at the same time? No. You have to go through a process. Because this is the material things. These are the physical laws that you have to fulfill. But Allah doesn't need all these physical laws. He created all these, but He is not bound to follow those laws. He can break it, all these things at any times. Like, we know that according to the physics, the water maintains its surface. But when Allah gave the miracle to his prophet Moses, then he put his, I mean, the, the stick that he has in his hand, and then there became 12 water gates in the, in the, in the, in the river Neel. So, it's, Allah is not bound that he has just made the system, and then he is bound to, to according to the, the, that he has, the all knowing, all have the, he has the powers, then he can make it what he wants. So our determination and God's determination is different. And one is called Mashiach in Arabic. Mean our wish, what we want to, to get something. And one is the Mashiach of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that also explains in the Quran, Wama tashauna illa Allah. Even we cannot think, even we cannot wish something unless the Allah wishes. And one of the companions of the Holy Prophet, once he said, Masha Allah, means he put two things together. He said, what Allah wishes and what you wish. Then at that time, the Holy Prophet corrected him. He said, when Allah says, then you no need to have the, I mean, the, the, the willing or wish of somebody else. Masha Allah is enough, it's sufficient. You no need to say what Allah wishes and what you wish. Allah's wish is sufficient is enough and if you put this formula or this sum in way to all of the attributed names of Allah we can prevent any kind of deity or any kind of falsehood or wrongdoing or wrongdoings that with these attributed names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the, all these attributed names for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is his personal he doesn't need to borrow he doesn't need to get all these his adjectives or attributed names from someone else but he is the giver of all these attributed names or all these qualities that is inbuilt in these names to the all mankind to the all human beings and this creation that that we are also a creature that this is Allah created not it was before it's not eternal it has been created and Allah is the creator. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is absolute, but we are not. He is absolute knowing everything, but our knowledge is not absolute. All, all our qualities and all our adjectives that are related to these words, that are these names that I have mentioned. So keeping in view these three basic formulas you put and then all these attributed names you can give to any human being but with this difference and can never be al with the human beings but we then can have rather than ab of the mean as brother said is mean slave is the obedient servant of God ab and if you find want to find the collection of these names in the Quran, then you go to the Surah. In the Quran, 255, you you see this, I mean, verse, and then you will find the chapter 2, is the, the collection of the very beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will just recite and go through it. Allahu la ilaha illa huwal hayyul qayyum, 
لا تاخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يهيدون بشيء من كلمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسي السماوات والأرض ولا يعوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم And now you see the main. Allah, none has a right to be worshipped but He alone, the ever living. Our life, as I told you, 40, 50 years, 60 years, let's say 90 or 100 plus, but someday it will finish. But His life, I know it, ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists. Neither slumber nor sleep overtake Him. To Him, belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Who is, who is he that can intercede with him except with his permission? In this life we need somebody's recommendations to get some job, to get something, maybe some long favor from someone. It's not like that in the day of judgment. You cannot find like these loopholes and then you find someone in, in between and then he can get some favor for you that you don't deserve. Who he is there can intercede with him except with his permission. He knows what happens to them, his creatures, in this world and what will happen to them in the hereafter. Mean Yom al that in the beginning of the talk I told you, the belief in the day of judgment. And they will never compass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. His kursi extends, kursi means chair. It's not this chair that we have in our mind. Sometimes, we are bound to get the meaning because our communication is depend upon the words. We convey the message and then we need some words. But this word maybe cannot fully explain or convey the, the meaning of that word that it exists in that word. So this kursi means the chair. But that chair is refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This kursi extends over the heavens and the earth. And our chair that one person can say is limited. But his kursi is totally or entirely different from that's what I told you. Finite and infinite, eternal, heavens and that. And he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. Because when we have a lot of pressure of work, okay, we say my nerves are getting bored and maybe a lot of pressure and then we need some time to rest. And sometimes people become workaholic and then from the next day they cannot be get ready for the work. If we do the work without our, I mean, physical limitations. But Allah is, is not bound with these kind of things. And He is the most high, the most great. So those 99 names is, has been, I mean, it's a beautiful collection of the names of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this uh, verse, one verse that is called Ayatul Kursi. And if you want to find, and, and other names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala included then, this in this, uh, I mean, three, three, I mean, uh, verses from the Holy Quran, then you can find this. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. O Allah, who is la ilaha illa, who is alim al-ghayb wa shahada, who is Rahman ar-Rahim. O Allah, who is la ilaha illa, who is al-Malik al-Qudus al-Salam al-Mu'min al-Muhaymin al-Aziz al-Jabbar al-Mutakabbir. سبحان الله يما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المصبر له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم. so at the end you see these all these are the attributed names of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. He is Allah then whom there is none has a right to be worshipped but He the All Knower of the unseen and the seen. He is the most beneficent the most merciful. He is Allah in whom there is none has the right to be worshipped, but He is the King, the Holy, the one free from all the defects, the giver of security, the watcher over His creatures, the Almighty, the Compeller, the Supreme Glory to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. High is He above all that they associate as partners with Him. He is Allah, the Creator. The inventor of all things, the bestower of forms, to whom belongs the best names, all that is in the heavens and the earth, glorify him, and he is almighty, the 
one place. I think for this uh, I have uh, documented in detail because the time now is has to close. So if you go through the, the notes, handouts that I have given for these the origin and some of the I can just want to, to write down two I mean, videos about this the creation of universe and the evidence of universe. I write it here and then you go through this website you can find a beautiful collection of the videos proving the creation and the evidence of the universe. The first one is <coughs> creationofuniverse.com evidence of
that's for the advanced level people who have the basic knowledge of Arabic than for their advanced level. So, yeah, every Saturday. <coughs> yes, every Saturday. And then, okay. yes. When is when is when is when is the lesson start? Uh, the lesson starts uh, around five. 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 PM. Five PM. Yes. <laughs> It ends uh, around 6 uh, 10? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, yes. Well, yeah, nowadays because the because the, our next prayer it depends upon the sunset. So now the sunset sun is going behind. So every day one minute difference. So five to six you simply keep it in mind. And then the next session, I mean this class is uh, 6 30 to 7 30. So these two classes are free and uh, then you will have a better understanding or direct I mean, approach to the Islamic I mean, the source of guidance that is the Quran and the life of the Prophet Muhammad, some sort that we call Sunnah. Then you don't need to depend on somebody to look up and teach the meaning, then you have a very direct approach and then you will know the spirit behind these words and then you will have a more comprehensive approach. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you Dr. Nahim for this uh, lecture. And now we're opening the question and answer session. And please feel free to ask any question in relation to the topic today. First, and any other topic in relation to Islam. Inshallah, we will try our best to give some answers as long as we know. Hopefully we will know some. And uh, one thing I just want to make a point. Uh, Dr. Hack is pointing that for those who are interested in studying Arabic, they can attend the Arabic lecture. I always say you don't have to understand Arabic to be a Muslim. It is recommended you read, you read and understand Arabic in order to get direct access to the source, as he said. But it's not a condition. I'm not an Arab. I don't speak Arabic. By the will of Allah, I'm a Muslim, and I understand the Quran when it's read. But I did some studies. So anyone who is willing to study and understand the Islamic teaching, he can very well do so. In any of your language, books are available and uh, teachers are at hand. So now please feel free to ask any question in relation to today's presentation. Dr. Hack is coming back. I think he will be the one to handle your questions. But nevertheless, you can go ahead. He's coming back in a few minutes. I think I have an easy one. Um, the SWT I, I know Dr. Hock, he always uses it, and it, it's quite a long, very yes. fast, but I, I don't know what the meaning is. Yes. The meaning FWT is, is a term used to say Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It means the exalted. 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 We Muslim, we always use this formula when we talk the name of Almighty God. So we should have told you this one. When you see this, it means Subhana wa ta'ala. And another one we use is P B U H. When we mention the name of the Prophet, we say peace be upon him. This uh, you is quite common. And when we say it in Arabic, we say Allah subhana wa ta'ala. Allah subhana wa ta'ala means Almighty God be exalted. So I don't know if I miss. That's the first one, and then this one is the upon you. And also we say in Arabic, uh, when we're talking about the Prophet, whenever we mention Muhammad, we say, Sallallahu <laughs> Alaihi it means peace be upon you. Okay. Next one, please. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah. what today, what we learned today, 
for the basic needs. Right. And what I found is that are they anything different from the needs of the Catholics or the Christians or the or the or the uh, people? Okay, there are major differences. Uh, I said in my last session presentation that basically all prophets and messengers came with one single message. <coughs> but this message was distorted over time. So the message was lost. The content of the message was lost. So people deviated from what they were assigned to do. So, for example, the main difference in the Islamic teaching and the Catholic or Christian, whatever denomination they are, they believe in the original sin, that every born, every child is born with a sin on his shoulders, which is uh, illogical in my opinion. Well, in the Islamic view, we believe that every human being is born sinless. You don't have any sin because the man who ate, I mean, who eat the apple, Prophet Adam, they said he eat the apple, the forbidden fruit. They said that is the original sin. In Islam, that is not the original sin. Not only in Islam, logically, the original sin is the sin of shaitan, the sin of uh, the devil, who refused to bow down to Adam. That took place before Adam and the tree. So the original sin is not eating the apple, is refusing to obey the orders of Almighty God. And the reason he did that, he was racist. He said, I am better than him. Shaitan told Almighty God that he is better than Adam. Because God asked him, why did you refuse to prostrate to what I have created from my own? He said, I'm better than him. So when every human being, any human being is looking upon, I mean looking down upon another human being, he's being racist, arrogant. All human beings are equal. That's what I told you last time. If you go to the Quran, chapter 49, verse 13, there's a very powerful statement there that every human being is equal to the other one. No difference. God Almighty said in this, I have created human beings from a male and a female that you will recognize each other, that you will not despise each other. And I explained this one last time, so move on to the next question, please. <coughs> Following up what you just said, then the original sin, Satan, was Satan, <coughs> the Christians would say Satan was Lucifer as an angel. Was Satan a created angel, or what was Satan in, in Islam? Islam, in the Quran, or any of the teaching of the <coughs> Islamic belief, Shaitan is not an angel. Shaitan is a jinn called the spirit in English, the jinn. And uh, when Almighty God created us, He created also these beings called the jinns. Those beings, they are also to worship God like us. So He said in the Quran, I did not create the human being and the spirit except to worship me. And believe me, all the creation of Almighty God only us, human beings, and these genes are disobeying the orders of Almighty God. So, Shaitan, the devil, what is called devil, is of this species. So, jinn are separate from angels? Genes are separate from angels. Correct. And uh, there is a, in the chapter 55, Chapter 55 of the Quran, I don't remember the exact verse where Almighty God is talking about this uh, creation, this uh, from which substance.